photography, like any other medium, has a necessity for evolution. If you look back through the history of sculpture, I mean, it, it used to always be carving out of things and now it's constructing things where and painting used to be always be oil painting but now there's acrylic and then watercolors and all the other mediums that have evolved within the discipline photography is the same you know the in the old days of course it was the historical processes the film then the then digital got introduced and of course now there's even ai photographic tools do i feel like any of these are destructing anything nah, they're just natural evolutions of the process i don't have any problem with them they're just different things you know so like you can't really directly apples to apples compare let's say an 8 by 10 shot on negative platinum print to an ai uh, generated photographic image. They're just different devices. They're different intentions. And part of that, I think, you know, that's sort of the thing is like the underlying nature of why somebody who chooses to work with the photographic medium chooses to use any particular set of skills or tools or techniques. I don't think it's a, a, a hierarchy. I don't think there's a better or worse. I think there's basically more appropriate techniques to use to express ideas than others, which leads me to what I want to sort of talk about today is the idea that I feel like photography in its most basic of senses, the, the nature of just documenting things or, or um, you know, Let's, let's say not just document, but just like capturing images of the world, you know, so like whether that documentation is a constructed thing where you've hired people or you've you know, built something or anything like that to achieve an image. I feel like there's a, a certain amount of a level of, of quality even that has been achieved worldwide that has has sort of in many ways reached a, a pinnacle like to the point that a lot of the imagery that I'm seeing re in recent years have been abstracted to such a point that they're not even doing really sort of those fundamental ideas of what photography originally was which is great that it, again is a natural evolution of the of all mediums and the question is, is how far does that abstraction go within the photographic medium without sort of transcending the photographic medium? And I say that because, of course, that's what I do or what I feel like I'm doing in my own work. So I rather I'm not sure if it was intentionally or unintentionally, but like I chose to stop taking new photographs for well, not for, but as my sort of core th medium, because it's in many ways, it's limiting the, like it, the, when I was being taught photography, it was like, you, once you made a print, the print was, a that was your, your consumable. That was your object. That was your thing that was for sale. And it needed to be treated as such. So like you treat it like an object that you would sell. So you treat it, you know, with kit gloves, basically like it's, it's the, the perfect example of your concept being expressed in um, consumable form. And that's great in many ways, but that, that idea um, that artistry that goes with that, you know, the dark room where you're hand printing these things and every single one is, while generally pretty consistent, they all have their own little unique quirks to them. You know, dust, scratches, the dodge and burn being a little bit better, a little bit worse, whatever. The chemicals, you know, not being as fresh by the end as they were in the beginning of the edition, these kinds of things. Those have all sort of gone out the window with digital because like quite literally you can reproduce exactly the same thing over and over and over and over. And it, it sort of got rid of a lot of that hand of the artist 
process, which I absolutely love. Like I'm so for silk screens, etchings, uh, you know, woodblock prints, lithographs, these kinds of things that while they are a, a mechanical reproduction kind of a thing, every single print is unique. Every single one shows a little bit of a hand of the technique and a hand of the artist, whatever you want to call it. And I'm all for it. And in, in that way, I feel like photography can transcend its its uh, limitations into a new way. So like this is what I do is is I try to utilize the actual output itself. So I take the the print as the beginning. So starting from the print, now what do you do? So you've got an image that's on paper and you can add to it, you can remove from it, you can construct it, you can deconstruct it, you can uh, do any number of different things to a, a photograph once it's there. Because like, while I'm working, I'm constantly thinking like, am I a painter now that I'm using paint? And I'm like, I'm not a painter because pretty much all I'm doing is removing the things that I created. So like I went through all this effort to make these really strong photographs and now I'm removing elements of these photographs in order to then reinterpret this idea in a new way. I mean, in many ways, revisiting work is a very common theme in a lot of artists lives. The you know, countless, like I, I think back to an old friend of mine, Wayne, who unfortunately passed away at a very young age, but he would he had this topic of these soap bars on a mount mantelpiece. He was a painter, and and he would paint these soap bars over and over and over, trying to achieve just the right expression of the how these soap bars conveyed something to him. Of course, most people didn't find the soap bars very interesting, but. The fact that he repeatedly you know, went over the same topic and topic again and again made the nuances, the little subtle differences between this one and that one really compelling, going like, oh, while I don't care about these soap bars, I really love what you did in this soap bar here. And so it's part of that is like taking a fundamental idea and revisiting it over and over and over again is very interesting at this point in my career to me because the the newness of a of a photograph is not as compelling as the newness of of the process of being able to add to the print so like you you have a similar image over and over and over maybe the same image over and over and over and what can be done to it? How can you elevate it? How can you add to it? How can you give it something more than the, just the image? And that, that it's that ability to go sort of transcend it that I really love. I mean, I always admired artists that sort of went above and beyond, like, you know, the, the Starnes twins, like the, the fact that they were making sculptural objects from photographs. That was so cool. Like Peter, Peter Beard, you know, his, you know, just drawing and destroying and collaging things. And, and really, you know, again, just sort of being more expressive and more, mm, boy, I mean, emotive in the work. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm still a, a bit of a, a intentional, contrived kind of an artist. Like I try to think through things, but boy, the process of working in this way has made me more reactive to what's going on because I can put down a layer of whatever, paint, medium, any kind of thing over my photograph. And I while I have a plan, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do this. And then after that, I'm going to do this, do this, do this. But I, I, once I start into it, when I put one layer down, I let it dry. The next day I come to it and I'm like, oh, no, we're doing something totally different. And then I'll try something totally different and then let that dry. And the next day come to it and go, oh, nope, nope, nope. Brand new thing after this. So we're not going, not even going back to that old thing. We're going to try something completely different. And having to continually problem solve and readjust based on the results that I'm achieving every time I put a new layer of something over the, the work 
is kind of exciting and kind of sort of freeing and open because I do, there's no obligation that I have because I don't have a client. I don't have anybody I'm answering to. I don't even have necessarily like a body of work that I'm trying to adhere to that I can go in any direction I want. I could use any technique or any medium I desire. The other day I started to do a studio cleanup because it was just getting too messy. And I went through and I found a whole bunch of old works that I was like, oh, I, you know, those could still be saved. I, they're not that bad. Because <laughs> I, I, either I hadn't gone far enough with a previous thing or I went to what I think was too far at the time. But some of many of them, I was like, oh, no, there's still still something there. And I think if I add this new thing that I'm doing on to them, the, the, they can be somehow saved. Um, and so I'm, I'm reworking a lot of that kind of stuff. So it's this constant ability or constant desire to like just continually problem solve and and try to find the thing that really sort of keeps me motivated because I find that that balance of work overworking versus underworking is a very difficult balance because for decades, I believe I underworked. I I played it safe. I was just like, okay, I don't want to do any more because I think I'm afraid of overworking. And because of that, my work was often too controlled and and sort of reserved. It's basically always looked like it didn't go far enough. And it's because, well, I didn't go far enough. Um, So this, this work that I'm doing, like, I have no problem with going too far. Because if I go too far in one direction, I can literally just zag to another direction completely. Uh, And I really enjoy that, you know, as far as... If I do too much, I can just throw some acid on it and remove some of the stuff that went too far or sand it away or do whatever is necessary to find the new sort of uh, outcome that I'm looking for based on whatever happened, not based on some preconceived ideas. And in many ways, it's incredibly freeing, but... The hard part is, is that what happens, what has happened, well, pretty much over the course of my entire career is, is that I fall into a, a realm of, a, of in the middle. I'm not a painter. I'm not a photographer. So how do I market myself? So like, am I a photographer? I'm a photographer. I'm using photographs, but I'm painting on them. I'm using gold leaf and I'm inspired by religious iconography, but my iconography and my artwork is not religious. Um, I'm, I'm inspired by all kinds of different things that have nothing to do with what am I actually make as a result. So the question is just sort of what am I, where do I fit in in the world? When I try to apply for grants or residencies that are like, okay, we're looking for a photographer. Well, I don't take pictures. I, I'm not a photographer. I, I manipulate photographs. I work with photographs as my basis. So I don't fit into that. Then the others will say, oh, we're looking for painters. Well, I'm not a painter. I mean, I, I push paint around. I use paint as a, a layering and a deconstructive technique, but I'm not a painter. So, it, it, and then of course, if somebody says interdisciplinary, that's also really sort of wishy washy. Like, technically, almost any art form could be defined as interdisciplinary. And so, the, am, am I pushing interdisciplinary enough into a new direction? No, absolutely not. Drawing and painting on photographs has been done for centuries. Well, okay, maybe not centuries, certainly decades. So, I mean, you know, am I really pushing the bounds of things? Absolutely not. Am I fitting into the molds that are pre-existing in the industry? Absolutely not. Um, and unfortunately, the, these new media, interdisciplinary, multimedia, the kind of things, I'm not sort of multimedia enough. And and this is one of those things that I feel like happens to a lot of us is, I mean, I know a lot of like photographers who then play with printmaking um, and then they add on a little bit of paint and they call themselves mixed media interdisciplinary. And that's true, but it's not enough for the industry. Like they want people who are 
working with video and sculpture, installation, doing it collaboratively, working in collectives, and, you know, addressing uh, social issues, and all, you know, this is the full interdisciplinary, you know, and then making it a web-based thing. Like, this is interdisciplinary. And it, it's one of those things that, because of the sheer volume of potential versions of art in this day and age, playing safe and doing something that um, doesn't push boundaries is is m minimized in many ways like it's like oh it's it's just that like oh it's just a painting on a photograph but people want more but then there's this sort of underlying issue of why do we make our artwork? And I don't mean like why as in like philosophically why, but like, like why as in what's our intended outcome or result? And I mean that clear just to try, but it's really hard to be clear about this, but there's different kinds of outcomes basically. So if I wanted to be an institutional artist, and these are just vocabulary terms I'm sort of making up based on previous conversations I've had with people, but institutional artwork is artwork that is designed for an institution. So a museum or a, or a Kunsthal or, or something like this, that, that would be very difficult for, let's say, a homeowner to put in their house. So we're talking you know, large scale sculptural projects, uh, video installation, performative pieces, these kinds of things, things that people basically could not own in their home. And then there is that other side of like, do you want to make art that people can possess and install slash exhibit within their home? You know, these are two different, they're both products. And they're different kinds of products and they're different kinds of purposes. Like growing up and, and in my formative years, I'm all about people engaging with my work. I want people to enjoy it. I want people to have it in their homes. I want people to see it. I want, you know, cause like I grew up, I grew up with a life size Leonard Baskin woodblock print right outside my bedroom door and I have great fond associations and memories with you know every morning seeing it and every night it being the last thing that I see and so that that association that relationship to art is what really drives me and motivates me I want people to engage in and, and appreciate it and love it do I want it to be in a collection of a museum and, and never, you know, never be on exhibit and not engage with people? My CV says, yes, I do. But my personal motivation says, no, I don't, you know? And so this is this, this constant struggle that I go through. And I'm sure many of you do as well is who am I making my work for? Do I want it to be in people's homes and, and enjoyed and appreciated generation over generation, or do I want it to be in a collection and sort of stacking my CV? I am more of the, the belief of Andy Warhol. So Andy Warhol had this sort of concept, which I don't believe he was the first nor the most recent to come up with this thing, which was the, basically the idea of, do I want to make one piece of art that cost $10,000 or do I want to make 10,000 pieces of art that cost $1 each? Either way, you get $10,000. But the question is, how, you know, in what format do you construct that that career? I am so much more of the, I'd like to make, 10,000 pieces and sell them for a dollar. But I can't do that because, <laughs> because the shipping cost of, of anything was going to like add to that price. The, 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 just the, the packaging and the handling of it. I mean, even if I sold 10,000 pieces at a dollar each, I'd have to charge like $25 each to just package it and ship it. So it ends up not being just that so that that sort of lends to the idea of like how do you bring your stuff to market so is it through 
art fairs is and i don't mean like the big institutional ones i mean like the you know, affordable art fairs is it through websites is it through instagram is it through whatever you need like the the idea of like how to bring your work to market is one of the struggles that I I go through all the time because you I, I want to be at a certain level because of course I mean I've been in the industry for over 30 years I ex- sort of feel like I'm better than certain aspects of this industry but on the other hand if the market can't b- or doesn't show interest in your work in a certain set of the market, then you you go where the market is instead of saying I'm better than that market. Like for example, almost every artist at some point in their careers shows in, let's say, a coffee shop or a bar or something like this. And at a certain point in every artist's career, they think that they're better than showing in a coffee shop or a bar. And are we really? I mean. It's kind of hard because in many ways, that is the kind of place we want our art to be seen. You know, m- many of us make work that it, it, while we have some deep philosophical or conceptual reason behind it, it actually ends up also being pretty or beautiful or a lovely decor thing, which that's a whole different issue, which I'll, you know, boy, I, I could go off on that because I have this belief that in the end, the product you produce through your creative expression should still be visually enticing. It should be seductive. It should draw the viewer in in some way that uh, is not necessarily like beautiful, but it's act not actively repulsive. Yeah, I unfortunately I've seen <laughs> just recently I've seen some really bad artwork that is just like why did somebody think that anybody would not only want to look at this but that they would want to pay money for this like it is so bad but you know there's it takes all kinds um but the point being is is that I beauty is an underlying thing that that the human mind desires like how many times have you ever gone into anybody's home and they said, oh, and we have this ugly painting over here. <laughs> like People will not put things that they believe are unattractive, ugly, or whatever. I mean, okay, sure, maybe they inherited some things from some family members that they don't love. But if they really don't love it, they're not going to hang it in their home. And so this is this underlying basis of like, are you making work for institutional, like highly conceptual reasons and for institutional purchasing and collecting? Or are you making it for people to enjoy in their daily lives? I feel that I make for daily lives. If it ends up in an institution through that process, amazing. All for it. Love it. Appreciate it. But that's not why I make it. I I want people to have it in their homes. Like I I recently went to a friend of mine that I known for twenty five years. I went to his house and he's like, "Oh yeah, this is our favorite piece of yours." And I'm like, "You have a piece of mine? I didn't even know you had that." Like, but he like put it in this place of prominence. And well, one of them he put in his bathroom, which I love. I love bathroom art. I think bathroom art is like one of the highest like. Uh, Accolades you can give to a piece of art in a home. Most people would say it's over the sofa, but I don't believe it's over the sofa because that's that's a place of pomposity. That's a, that's sh- for showing off. You know, but very few people like sit in their living room by their sofa, where people go every day, constantly, multiple times a day, is your their bathroom. So you want really, you know, somebody who really appreciates some piece of art. And if they put it in their bathroom, they really love it because they are going to see it multiple times a day. That's a high accolade to me. But going back to the point is is that making works, you know, who are we making it for? I feel like we're making it for, well, I feel like I'm making it for people to use and appreciate in their homes. And that's where I, 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 I want most of my work to be. I want people to like it 
enough to engage with it and enjoy it in their home. The struggle, of course, is the balancing act of the finances of the whole thing because the amount of time, money, energy that I put into producing, it's it's really hard to find buyers who are willing to pay enough. And as much as I would love to sell all my artwork for very cheap just so that people really enjoy it, there is a certain amount of business that always has to go on when any sort of product is exchanged for for goods and services. So it's the struggle of taking an abstract thing that you spent decades, you know, evolving yourself into to create a thing and wanting to sell it to get it into somebody's home so that they can enjoy it and appreciate it. But you need to be compensated fairly. And that that comes to the point of like some some artists, you know, have their works that are in institutions and these kinds of things. And then they have other less expensive works, prints or edition pieces or something like this that they produce that allows them to uh, make more affordable works for you know, people who don't have the money to buy or, or even that they couldn't buy because it, it is an institutional piece of the scale that it is and it's unavailable and unattainable for the general public. But does a does a print have its merit? Boy, that's a different, that's another topic for another day. But anyways, the, the whole thing is this struggle, the struggle of trying to find the right market, both, you know, in the nature of geographically, because like not every work will connect with viewers in every country or every culture or every region. Um, but also trying to find the right, uh, I don't want to call it like caliber, but like but the right level of buyers or in, interested consumers. Because, you know, if you go out and you call it, you say your paintings are $10,000, you have limited your potential buyers. Whereas if you put them out as $1,000, your potential buyers are very different. Um, it's not that they're different. There's a larger, larger amount of people, let's say, that would be included in that number. So... It's a struggle. I struggle with it. I think we all struggle with it. I've, I don't think I've ever met a single artist that ever that says, you know, I'm doing fine. Yeah, I'm selling enough. I don't need any more. Like We all need more. We all want to push more. We all want to problem solve some of these problems in our lives. And I don't have answers. I do have questions. I have lots of questions. And that's what I'm here to do is just throw out some of these questions and maybe some of you all have answers. I'd love to hear some of your experiences and feedback about these ideas because I don't have the answers. Um, but I, I've been in the industry enough to, to have a lot of questions. <laughs>